Hello, Writing with Authors community. We have taken a bit of a break, but we are back here today with an author from Ireland, but living here in the States. He is a Wall Street bestseller, and we are going to dive all into his writing journey, some tips for success. And as you can see behind him when he comes on the screen, he's got several books to share today. So thank you for joining us. My name is Vincent A. Lancey, and we have an incredible episode ahead especially if your dreams are to become as large as a Wall Street bestseller. No matter what kind of organization you work for, whether it's your own small business or a global Fortune 100 company, your number one goal is success. Predictable success, this bestseller, takes you step-by-step step through a startingly simple, intuitive, and universal process that shows you how to be, bring sustained, lasting, and predictable success to your organization Find out where your organization is today and take the uncertainty out of tomorrow as you make a journey towards predictable success. And I love that. To introduce Les on the show today, he has been involved in launching over 40 companies before the age of 35. That's in addition to all of these books. Using that experience, he has also co-founded one of the first business incubators in the world, which turned into a multinational consulting company that advised hundreds of organizations around the world. If you're like me, very business oriented, looking for tools to grow, this is going to be the show for you. Les McEwen, thank you for joining the show. Great to be here, Vincent. Hi, everybody. It's great to have you. I'm excited to connect, and I want to thank your team for finding the show somehow. Please introduce yourself a little further to our audience, and then we're going to dive all into book talk. Sure. Uh, well, as you already mentioned, and as uh, uh, listeners and viewers are going to pick up within nanoseconds, is I'm not from these parts. Uh, I'm already uh, originally from Ireland, as you mentioned, from Belfast. That's the part of Ireland you come from. You go to Dublin, but if, like me, you lived in Belfast, you got out of there. We had a civil war during the first 30 years that I was growing up. I lived here in the United States for 22 years. I'm a U.S. citizen, got my U.S. passport, um, but my accent has decided not to completely relocate. Uh, Short-handed story, um, as you mentioned, uh, at the early stages of my career, I was a CPA, I had no interest in filling in people's tax forms. I became a CPA because I wanted to get to understand business. Yes. Uh, I started to help people launch businesses at a time, I was still back in the UK then, when there was a huge emphasis on uh, entrepreneurship, a lot of loans, depreciation, tax write-offs. So there are a lot of people trying to start new businesses. I started to help them initially, just helping them put their cash flows together, find a partner, sometimes even think of an idea. Um, folks started to then ask me, they would say, hey, would you like to come on board? What these days would be called like a fractional CEO or something like that. And I just got to choose. I got to cherry pick six to eight opportunities every year for eight to 10 years. And as you say, I, I, I reached the age of 35, which those of you who are watching the video can tell that was a long time ago. And I had helped launch 42 businesses. And I even a dumb Irishman is going to start seeing some common patterns when you do something that often. And I started to write those patterns down. We then started the consulting company. Uh, I was in uh, 13 offices dotted all around the world. And with that consulting company, we were helping second stage growth with organizations. So in economic development agency in some part of the world, you know, Newfoundland and Canada would call up and say, come and help us build local business. And we would Amazing. start working with their existing businesses. I could see this model was was uh, playing out over not just early struggle and uh, launching, but right through a whole series of stages. And that's why I moved to the US, coming to the end right now, um, because I wanted to see if this model proved out to, with very large companies. And so I did, and it became this book, Predictable Success. Yes. Well, thank you for inspiring me as we're just on the show right now. But you held that book up. I think I have to just go right ahead and ask you, describe this book for our audience. Well, what predictable success does is uh, it explains something that most of us never really think about, those of us that are starting businesses, um, but hits you in the face really hard eventually. And that is, we tend to think when you're starting a new business, you tend to think, if you think about it at all, which you typically don't, you tend to think there are only two stages uh, for this thing that you're starting. So let's say you're gonna start a coffee shop or you know an online retailer or whatever. You if you if somebody was to ask you what sort of stages do you think this will go through? Well, first of all, they'd look at you like you're an idiot. Why would you ask me that dumb question? And then if they think about it, say, okay, I know it's going to be tough at the start, 
that's the startup phase, what I call early struggle. Uh, and I know a lot of businesses don't make it, but I, I'm pretty much going to make it. So I'll get to the next stage. And that's as far as it goes. So if we get to the next stage, I give that next stage after early struggle a highly technical name. I call it fun. And that's what most everybody who starts a business and me at the start as well thinks that's it. I made it. We're viable. There are seven stages that every business goes through, seven. And when you hit just the third one, I call it whitewater. That's whenever this little fun business has to grow up and start putting systems and processes in place. Yeah. It smacks most, most founders over the side of the head because they thought they had it nailed. I was having fun. Now I seem to be screwing up. What just happened? Did I get stupid six months ago? And the answer is no, you're going through a pattern that every business goes through. So I teach that pattern and show people how to optimize the time in the bad stages and get into the good stages. Yes, there are good and there are bad. It is a roller coaster at times. To preview your book for our audience, describe those seven stages for us. Sure. So um, the peak stage, if you think the, the whole life cycle is in essence an arc. Uh, you know, think about tossing a ball into the air and, and the arc that it takes. There are three growth stages up the left side. So the early struggle, it's a startup stage. High uh, mortality rate, 80% of all new ventures fail. So only 20%, one in five, get through to the first real valid stage. That's the stage I call fun. And that's the stage where we just say yes to everything and somehow make it happen. You know, we, we, we just reach for the impossible. We get every Friday night, we're having beer busts because, for two reasons. One, we don't have an HR department yet to tell us we can. <laughs> Two, we're righteously exhausted. We're right. exhausted, but we feel great. How did we do that? How did, man, how did we do that this week? And I get to do it again next week. Then you hit the stage that I talked about, which is whitewater. And that that's, a, that's a byproduct of success and fun. You're successful and fun, so you grow. And you don't know it, but behind you, all around you, just quietly, the business is becoming more and more complex. And the complexity at some point just boils over. It's like a, a pot of milk boiling over. You just look around, you think, what, what caused this mess? And it's complexity. So you got to put some systems and processes in place. You don't want to put too many in because you'll lose your flexibility. You put the right amount of systems and processes, you get to that peak stage, the top stage, which I call predictable success. Mm -hmm. And the difference between predictable success and fun, which are the only two valid stages of all seven, is in predictable success, you can scale. You can do a J curve. You can have that sort of growth. In fun, you have that lobbed growth and it's always gonna have a cap at, mm -hmm. at whitewater. You go through whitewater, you can do the J curve. You do the right stuff, stay in predictable success for as long as you do the right things. But if you put too many systems and processes in place, you'll start to go down the decline stage. You'll get bureaucratic. And I won't describe all of the decline stages. Who needs to know how to you gotta buy the book to find out more about that. But he has given <laughs> us a preview. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> So the, the, we've got treadmill, which is just, you're just over-processed. It's like the mirror image of uh, whitewater and whitewater for the first time. We're under-processed. We've got to put systems and processes in place. Treadmill, the first decline stage, we're over-processed. We've got to take, we can recover from that. We've got to start, like, you know, you go to uh, some utilities website, you've got to fill in 17 fields in a stupid form just to get a call back. That's treadmill. And if you do the right stuff, you can come back into predictable success because unlike human aging, organizations can actually turn the clock back yeah. up until the next stage. If you don't turn the clock back in treadmill, you fall into what I call the big rut. Mm -hmm. And the big rut is a big, long, slow slide into decline. And what's happened is we've lost the ability to self-diagnose. Uh, customers are a pain in the neck and we love it. We don't, we're not changing for anybody, right? And you think about a massive utility, some of the airlines, personally, I think Microsoft's been in the big rut for about seven or eight years now. Um, Harvard University have been in the big rut for over a hundred years, but a lot of the big rut organizations have got massive balance sheets because they were in predictable success for so long. So they can just keep sliding into our relevancy over a very long period of time. And then finally it all dies. Very so well it. put. Yes, I love all the examples you gave. They're so clear to our listeners who may be on the fence of even starting a business. Maybe now you just push them in the right direction. Be sure to stick around to the end of the show. We will explain how exactly to get this book. Let's now switch over to advice, though, here. What is some advice you can offer to our community of writers here, Les? Well, I well, one is get yourself a dog, those of you who can uh, who are watching the video, because uh, stroking dogs is a great stress reliever. That's been 
clinically proven. So get yourself a dog. Um, the best piece of advice I ever got was from uh, a fellow business writer, a guy called Jim Collins, who wrote a couple of uh, brilliant books, Built to Last, Good to Great. And um, I was fortunate enough to share a speaking stage event with him. And uh, this was just before I was buckling down to produce. Uh, the, this is the first of a series of four books, uh, uh, all about uh, business growth. And uh, I asked him what his best piece of advice was. And he said, get a shitty first draft. And that absolutely makes a huge difference. You can putz around, you know, honing your chapter headings, you know, your first three chapters, all that sort of stuff. There's nothing like looking at something that's a completed manuscript, even if it's shitty, because you've got something to work with and you can make it better. Yeah, uh, yeah. And the second uh, uh, piece of advice I would give is um, self-publish. Don't go with commercial public uh, uh, publishers. I've, I've got two of each, and I, and I much prefer having the intellectual property ownership where I can do what I want with the materials rather than having, and I won't name my publishers for libel purposes, rather than having them um, dictate to me what that I can or can't do. Would you like to maybe delve a little deeper real quick here, talking about the differences of the two fields for those people who are new to the writing world and want to publish their first book? Sure. Well, what everybody thinks is that the glamorous thing to do, and it was true that it was at one point, is to go find one of the big, very well-known publishing houses, McGraw-Hill, Macmillan, mm -hmm. people like that, to sell you, you sell the manuscript to them. Uh, they pay you, which is nice, but they'll pay you, uh, if you're new to the business, they'll pay you something like two and a half grand, three grand. Maybe if you're very, very lucky and you hit a fad, five grand. Um, and they then own the, uh, not the intellectual property, but the publishing rights. So they decide whether it stays in hardback, whether it goes straight to paperback. You can't hand, you can't uh, give people free PDFs. You've got to ask their permission even to make a lead magnet of that book. And then you get nothing. You get no more money because you will never, ever, unless you're absolutely in the top 1%, you'll never earn out that advance. 98% of all business books sell less than 150 copies. So you'll never earn out that. You'll never see another penny. Whereas if you up front, and I realize not everybody can do this, but if you up front find yourself, uh, there are a number of really good businesses who will do the whole thing for you. They will do all the ISBN stuff. They'll find a printer, they'll yep. source, yep. They'll, they'll design the cover, they do all that, but you pay them, but then you own everything. So I can do whatever I want with this. I can, you know, I can make a loose leaf copy. I can, you know, whatever I want. I, uh, I can hand it out. Uh, it costs me like $2.50 to hand out a, a copy of this. If, I, if I'm going to an event and I want to give a thousand people this book, I can do it. If I want to do it with one of my ones that are traditionally published, that's going to cost me ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 just to do that. Thank you for sharing that. There is a lot of misconception on which route to take. What's well, what works well for some doesn't work for everyone. There's different scenarios and different sure. situations for everyone, but I appreciate you enlightening our audience, letting them know the differences. We've talked about a lot today. We found out what eventually led you into being an author right in the beginning. We spoke about your book. We have some advice and we even touched on the differences of publishing. Now let's find out where to find your book, where to learn more about you. It's all at predictablesuccess.com. That's my website. All one word, predictablesuccess.com. Don't get tripped up with those two C's in the middle. Uh, and it, it, the, the, you can download first chapter of most of my books um, just right there in the resources section, all for free. Thank you for sharing that. Everyone listening on, be sure to check out his book. There is a lot to offer in there through his experiences, of course. We will see you next week on another Writing with Authors. Les, thank you very much for stopping by once again. Thanks, Vincent. Bye, everybody.